Howdy guys, what's up? Uh, I've been on hiatus for a little bit. I haven't posted in about a month. I just, I've been busy between, you know, school and midterms and all kinds of stuff. And uh, trying to get ready for mowing season since it won't be too much longer before the snow all melts and it gets warm. Um, but the past couple of weeks we've been having a lot of snow. And I've, and I've been going around to my neighbor's development the other developments into my neighbors houses and shoveling their driveways and I, I bought a second shovel and uh, it was supposed to be better than the than the one that I had before and it didn't really help and I figured you know what, I got this 210 here I'm gonna use it for snow removal just like I wanted to in the first place so I uh, I started looking for a blade for this tractor so I could plow snow with and uh, after a little bit of searching over in Pennsylvania about an hour from me I found this little guy um, this is a Model 43 blade, which is sp uh, specifically for the, the 110 and 112 square fender and all the 200 series. It's a 42 inch blade, you know, regular good old steel blade. It's a, this is one of the early ones. It's a, got an F069 prefix, which means it's, I believe it's from the late 60s, early 70s, around the time of the, the 110 square fender before they came out with the 200 series, but it fits the 200 series without a problem. Um, but th this guy had it uh, for sale over in Pennsylvania on Craigslist. He wanted $150 for it, and he had it up for sale for about a month, and no one bought it. So he relisted it for $125, and then I sent the guy an email, and he told me he would take $100 for it, and I said, sold. So we went and picked it up, and uh, it's in great shape. I mean, it's kind of, looking at it, I mean, most of these blades get, you know, pretty badly rusted and everything but this one only has you know some scratches it's got a rust spot there it's got some wear and the the bottom uh, the wear bar on the bottom that's got rust too I'm gonna uh, it's it needs a little bit of work but it's not too bad um, it came off of a 110 square fender and uh, the guy actually uh, the guy said it it, uh, it works like really good and he liked using it on his 110 he said it was a lot of fun to use I said, well, great, I'll probably end up enjoying it, too, because, I mean, I got that little, I got this this little Troy-built snowblower, but, um, it just, I, with all the driveways and stuff that I do, and I plow the streets, too, and having, like, a slope driveway, the snowblower isn't always the best. I mean, it's, it helps sometimes, but I figured I would try out a plow, and snowblowers do a better job of getting rid of the snow, but... I like doing it on the tractor because it takes a little longer and it's just fun. And with the blade, I can use uh, I can use it for all kinds of other stuff too, not just snow. Um, but I picked it up and then mounted it on, and it just uh, all it is. There's a spring-loaded pin there and there, and you just pull out on the pin, and then it mounts into the two holes at the front of the frame here. And then there's a slot. Uh, there's a slot. Let me see if I can get it. There's a slot in there, and it just basically rests in that slot. And uh, then it did, that's all there is to it, to mounting it to the tractor. And then uh, it has this this bracket welded on here with the with its own little pin. And uh, it hooks to the front lift rod. Your tractor has to have a front lift rod. Most of the ones I've seen have them, but some don't. Um, but the thing that uh, the thing that a lot of people seem to forget, or they're they're always you know they always got to go out and buy, is the lift link. And I actually, I almost bought one, but John Deere wanted $30 for it. It's just, you can kind of see it in there. It's two little pieces of metal, about two and a half inches long with a, with a couple holes in them. And you basically just stick, you stick two clevis pins through and then put a cotter pin on, on each of them. And it, and it links, it links the, the plow bracket to the, the uh, front lift rod, which is right here. There's the, the, where the rod comes out and then this, this vertical piece pivots back and forth and helps lift it and uh, you can't lift the plow without that bracket um, so I went to the deer dealer they wanted like 30 bucks for it I said that's ridiculous so my uncle actually made that for me he just took a couple pieces of steel and drilled holes in it and painted it and uh, and did it for free so he just had some extra steel laying around so I saved myself $30 and it's just it looks exactly like the original and uh, we just Stuck a couple clevis pins through it and got some cotter pins and uh, it works great. Because before what I had to do with this this clevis pin here, this actually came with it and it it bolts into that hole down there. But all that does is keep it um, suspended in the air, like you can't you can't lift it or lower it. Um, 
So I tried, I was just using that, I would, I would, you know, lift up on the blade, pull the pin out and drop it, and then have to pick it back up again and slide the pin through. But that didn't, I didn't do that for too long. Um, but yeah, I got the, I got the, um, got the link put on it, and it, uh, it, it works good now. I'll show you, I mean, I have the, I'm so glad that I put the helper spring on the tractor when I restored it because I it was it I mean for four I got it for forty bucks on eBay and the, a helper spring usually sells for a hundred fifty dollars or even more than that so it was a steal and it just bolts right up to the rock shaft and since I'm not getting a hydraulic lift for this tractor because you know those, those kits are just so expensive and hard to find I'll probably just get up end up getting another tractor like a three eighteen I'm actually looking into getting a three eighteen this spring um, we'll see. Um, but I'll show you now the lift link is hooked up just Then it just locks in place. It's pretty simple um, It works good. I mean, it's hard obviously it's harder to do standing next to the track than sitting on the seat, but uh, You get used to it after a while um, It's a good workout like I said and then uh, I have an angle to the right here. You can actually angle these any uh, direction. This I put this little keychain ring on it to help. Um, this is the pin for the angle. It's got the, I believe it has about six holes in it, six or seven holes. And then you just basically all you do is you just pull up on this little pin. I'm not sure if I can do it with one hand. Yeah, pull the pin up like that, and then you can you can slide it and just angle it in any direction. There you go. Now it's now it's straightforward. It's that simple. Getting off the tractor isn't, you know, too much of a pain to have to angle it and everything. And they actually did make an angling kit for this. Um, it, it, I believe it bolts, it mounts right here where this slot is, and it hooks, it hooks into the, uh, it hooks in down here, and it just lifts up this pin. You can, you can sit in the seat and just pull back and forward, and it'll angle left and right. And that's, make, it definitely makes it a lot easier. But I can't. I couldn't find one. I could probably have my uncle fabricate one. It would be a little easy, but I'm, I can live with manual angle. That's no problem. So I got it all mounted up, and I tried it out on the dirt, and it works great. And as you guys can see, we've actually had a snowmageddon or whatever the hell they called it. Um, one of the biggest snowstorms we've had this season. It's a real th thick, wet snow, and it actually it started two days ago. We had a snow day, and uh, I spent six hours plowing snow, you know, plowing people out and everything. And uh, it did great. I mean, it took me a while to get used to the controls and everything, but once I did, uh, got the whole driveway plowed. My dad's car was parked down there, and our Sequoia was parked in the garage. Um, and I just pulled the 210 right out and started plowing. Sometimes you have to go over the uh, over it over the snow once with the blade raised, and then again uh, to you know push it all the way through. And sometimes you have to put it in fourth gear and ram it, but it wasn't too bad. Um, now, if you're going to run an attachment like that, you have to have some sort of counterweight. And I don't have wheel weights or chains on this tractor yet. So I I uh, got a little redneck and I rigged this up. <laughs> I just took this plastic milk crate that we had laying around. And I, I uh, it's hard to see here, but um, I cut a slot in that side with, the, uh, with a hacksaw. And basically, you, it just slides over the trailer hitch. And then I have it bungee strapped uh, over the, the top of the hitch plate there, and then it comes back down and hooks in here. And I just put I drilled holes through. I have another one here, and then for extra support, I have this one uh, coming across the middle and hooking into the hole where the depth the depth height knob goes. I took that out because I don't use it. I don't need it. Um, and then I filled it up with bricks. I I had a cinder block, but the cinder block actually made it sag a lot, made the basket sag, and it would have broke right off, so, I mean, yeah, this is not a very stable uh, weight box, but it works great for now. Um, I'm looking into getting wheel weights pretty soon, because um, they make them in cast iron and plastic. I think they're both about 50 pounds each, I could be wrong, but I'm looking around. I like the cast iron ones on a restored tractor because it gives it the vintage look, um, and because they last longer, I like. I'll, I'm okay with the plastic ones, but they they don't look that good on a restored tractor, and uh, they're plastic filled with concrete, so they don't hold up as well. Um, but I don't know. I'll, I'll figure. You can see for now. I just I just took some old bricks. Some have concrete in the middle for a few extra pounds, and 
I have about 75 pounds of uh, bricks in there. I mean, you figure a brick weighs about uh, six or seven pounds. I have tw uh, 10 full bricks and then a couple of pieces of half bricks that we had laying around from when my grandparents' house got built, you know, seven years ago. Um, but yeah, it actually, it worked great because I was out plowing snow with it yesterday and I did a little bit today too. Um, and it worked great. It added a little extra traction. The, the tires still slipped a little, but it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be because before I would just go out and, and get stuck and then I'd be screwed. Um, the only problem is that if I do get stuck, it's hard to push out because I have all this extra weight on the rear, but um, the wheels don't spin as much. I mean, they'll still spin, but not as much as they used to. This thing gets better traction, and since I have the, the heavy-duty tires on it now, too, that, that'll help a little. Um, it actually looks really clean because I, I was going up and down the roads and through the slush and ice and everything because all the water uh, that was running through the streets froze up and turned to ice, so I was I was getting rid of some of the ice. But, yeah, I'll, uh, I mean, here's another look at the plow. You guys can, uh, check it out. And now I'll show you, uh, I really, I apologize. I didn't take any video when I was out plowing. But, like I said, I was still trying to get used to it and everything. And, uh, now that I'm, now that I kind of got the hang of it, I'll show you, I'll try and show you how you, how, uh, how you plow with it. And, uh, it's going to be tricky because I kind of need three hands, uh, because it's a gear drive, it's not a foot-driven, you know, hydrostat, but it still has a lot of power. And it just, it gets to be, you know, it turns into a habit after a while. Um, I, I usually run it in third gear, or if I really need to, like, you know, haul ass, I, I put it in uh, fourth. But, um, so let's get on the seat. It hasn't run since about 10 o'clock this morning, and it's about 1 o'clock now, so it should be a little cold. It's getting warmer and warmer. It's supposed to get up into the 40s this week. Let's just enjoy it while it lasts. Try to run for a second. Okay, I'll just push this off. This is where my dad's car was sitting. So, I'll show you how this works. Just angle it to the right. Just pull up on the pin and slide it to the right. Sounds like it's coming loose, but uh, it's just because it's up in the air. Actually, I'm going to run second gear just, you know, for, to make things easier. Don't put the plow all the way down to the concrete. It's mostly turned to slush now. Kind of messing around a little bit. I can move a lot quicker than this, but running as fast as I can go, so it's not pushing it all the way, but you get the idea. And then we just make one final pass and push it all off. Not too bad. It's just it's like I said, it's it's clumping together because it's now now it's turning to slush and eventually it'll melt, but these piles will be here for quite a while. It almost creates like its own little curve. If 
front axle needs to be greased, I think. That should help the steering a little bit, but I haven't greased it in a while anyway. Yeah, typical maintenance. There you go. That's just to give you an idea of what it does. I'll, I have a GoPro. I'm going to start using that. I gotta, I'll got to. i figure out how to mount it to the fender and try using it. I'm having problems with the files transferring to my computer, so otherwise I would have had a ton of videos already. And it would make so it would make things so much easier because you know you need three hands to do this with a, with my uh, camera in my hand. But um, yeah, there you guys go. I'll, uh, I really regret not taking videos and pictures from when I plowed yesterday because I did a lot of plowing. I was out for six hours going around. I I even went up the road um, just to see if there was anyone who needed to get plowed because this tractor will handle it. Um, but yeah, I'm looking into getting a set of wheel weights and chains, so I'm uh, still looking around. Uh, that should help a little bit, and uh, they don't have a full, you know, plowing rig. And I can, I can get rid of this, rid of this uh, redneck setup here. Uh, it's working good though. I mean, it's giving me a little bit more traction, but you know, it's not perfect. It's not ideal. It's not going to last for a while because you can, you can see it's already starting to sag. But uh, this is, this is going to have to do for now. So. There you guys go, just a little uh, update on the 210, and you guys can see uh, new equipment and stuff like that. And uh, I'm going to start posting some more videos again. I have uh, some updates to do. I've been working on the Yard King a little bit, cleaning that up and taking that out for test runs and stuff like that. And uh, the 111, I actually started tearing apart, and it, there's a lot more rust on it than I thought. So uh, last week, I actually, my uncle came down with the Ford tractor and picked it up and now it's actually sitting up at his shop, and the next day or so, him and I are going to go in there and, and actually put the torch to it and uh, and start, you know, melting the rust off of it and getting the good parts off. Because I have I have an ad for sale on Craigslist and on eBay, so got a lot of guys asking for parts. Um, yeah, I'll make a video on that too. So there you guys go. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and uh, tell me what you think. See you later.